Well, it's a conservative statement to say that by 2025, you'll be able to look inside your brain, see everything that's going on, all the interneuronal connections, all the synaptic clefts, all the neurotransmitter strengths, and create a huge database and copy down every salient detail, and then reinstantiate that information in a neural computer of sufficient capacity and create basically a copy of the thinking process that takes place in your brain. Now that's one scenario, but it's really an existence proof to show that we can tap the secrets of intelligence that exist in, let's say, the human brain. Once we've scanned that information, we can also understand it, see how it's organized, improve on it. We can extend it. We can make your, the memory a thousand times bigger. We can make it faster. We can expand the perceptual capabilities. To transfer your mind to a computer, this seems to be the ultimate dream of many scientists. To liberate us from our old body that is becoming obsolete in this technological world. We would then go on living as free spirits in cyberspace. Shalom brothers and welcome to GMS Prophecy Soup. Today's show is on the Mark of the Beast, a.k.a. the RFID implantable microchip. Now, uh, the first thing I want to do is say, Barak the Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the elders of GMS. You brothers already know who they are. And shalom to you brothers out there that is doing the work in sincerity. You know, that's pushing this thing and going hard, running that race hardcore. All right, now, you got a lot of loonies out there that are saying that the mark of the beast is sleeping with a white woman, which by the way is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life, or that the mark of the beast is Christianity. Now you brothers out there that are enlightened, you know that the Bible tells you, Revelation 13 and 14, clearly that the mark of the beast is something that's going to be implanted under the skin or inside your body. So let's get started with the program. So what does RFID stand for? RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. So basically what they want to do in a nutshell is they want to be able to track every single human being just like they track packages. Every package has a unique identifier number or like UPS they call it a tracking number. And with that tracking number it is unique to every single package. And you can see where the package came from. You can see where the package is now. You can see where the package is going. And when the package is delivered, and that's a key term because delivered is the same term they use in the hospitals. When a baby is born, they say the baby is delivered because once again, you're nothing but merchandise to the elites of the society. But when uh, merchandise is delivered, you can see that and you can track that through the unique identification code which comes with every single microchip so that code is going to replace a driver's license and it's going to replace a social security number RFID is radio frequency identification it consists of a tiny silicon computer chip and an antenna that a remote reader can scan and send to a database RFID is the backbone of the Internet of Things and it's already big business for example, Walmart now requires all suppliers to use it to track its products. And the U.S. military uses it to follow supplies around the world. You've literally got some of the biggest corporations on the globe investing hundreds of millions of dollars already in the infrastructure to make every physical object on Earth trackable. And then you've got the public who really has no idea that this technology is coming. This tiny tube contains 150 RFID computer chips. Their size means companies or the government can easily hide them. Each chip can give a unique serial number to every product. And then, its antenna helps remote scanners read the RFID tags, even through materials like fabric and plastic. Right now, everywhere in the United States, it is perfectly legal for a company to place an RFID tag, say, in, in your shoe, sandwich it between the layers of your shoes. Uh, we've seen prototypes of those at trade shows. Sell that pair of shoes to you and use it as a tracking device. Albrecht, the ACLU, and other civil liberties groups want a public assessment of the technology. But so far, they've found few friends in Washington. 
Although Bove calls the technology neutral and is quick to praise the benefits, he agrees that consumers need safeguards. For Albrecht, a first step would be labeling all RFID products. When you really envision a world in which every physical object can be numbered and tracked, a physical world in which people can be numbered and tracked, in which RFID implants can be put into individuals, and maybe even in babies at birth, and, and every move that we make can be identified and logged in a computer database, you begin to raise some very frightening questions, I think, about power. Now, one thing I want to touch upon before we moved on is that there's two types of microchips. You have passive RFID chips, and then you have active RFID chips. Now the difference is that in a passive RFID chip, it doesn't need a battery. There's no battery in it. And what happens is that when a message is sent out to it by a scanner, then it wakes up the chip and then the chip sends information back to it. So the chip actually gets its electricity from the scanner when it's scanned. Now the disadvantage of that is that the scanner has to be close, relatively close to the chip. So they use it now for like, uh, you know, doctors and medical offices. There's people out there right now that actually have the chip. See the chick in a video, she's talking like this is what they're gonna do or this is what it may be used for. This is being used right now as we speak. So that's a disadvantage of a passive RFID chip. There's no battery in it, but the chip is, cheap to make since there's no battery and that's what's being used right now but when they move on and they globally use this chip because right now it's kind of like an experimenting experimental stages they slowly breeding people and having them convincing them that it's okay to use a chip so right now it's kind of still in the experimental stages they haven't forced it upon the people but when they do, they're going to use something called an active RFID chip because they need something that emits a strong enough wave that they can grab from their satellites. And that way they can track you wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, they can follow you. They know exactly your exact every move. Now, the main company that is producing these chips or that's um, moving with this technology is called a very chip. And they just acquired a company called Wireless EXI, I believe it's called. And this company, they specialize in wireless security and wireless technology. And the current project underway through this company is called Thermal Life. Now what Thermal Life does, it allows, the technology allows a device to have electricity or gather electricity from the fluctuation in a person's body temperature. So as your body, body temperature fluctuates up and down, it acts almost like a generator and it provides electricity to the microchip. So the microchip actually turns you into like a cell tower, like your cell phone it communicates with the tower. Well, you're going to communicate or the chip inside of you will communicate with the satellites. And that's the advantage of a passive, excuse me, of an active RFID chip. So that's what they're going to be implanting in human beings, all right? And that's what this technology is evolving to. But for us, for Hebrew Israelites, we're not to go near that stuff. We're not evolving into that with the rest of the world because the rest of the world is going to be marked for destruction. All right. If you read Romans 12 and 2, it says not to be um, conformed to this world. So we're not going to take the RFID microchip because if you read Revelation 13 and 14, it tells you clear, cl clear cut what's going to happen, that the Most High is going to destroy your ass. All right. And that proves that Christianity, you know, you got loonies out there saying Christianity is a market of beasts, sleeping with white women. And whatever else, it proves that that stuff is not the mark of the beast spoken about in the Bible because if that was the case, every last one of us would be dead right now. The Most High would have destroyed us all by now. And another point I want to bring out is that once they implant the whole entire globe with this chip, is they can know the exact number of men on the planet, which is another violation of the Most High's laws. 
Um, so now they had the Georgia Guidestone, and according to the Georgia Guidestone, they want to decrease the population by two thirds. So in order for them to do that and to maintain that number, is they're going to have to know exactly how many people are on the Earth. And with this, with this chip, they can basically produce an inventory of exactly how much merchandise they have out there. And every single so-called newborn child that's delivered into this world is going to be inserted with an RFID microchip. And if you decide to try to go against the law, let's say you insert the microchip and you say, you know what, you decide, okay, now I want to repent because the Most High said not to do it. Well, guess what? The microchip bonds with the tissue in your body, so you can't remove it. You're going to have to have, have it surgically removed. And besides that, if they have any inkling that you're trying to remove the chip, they can hit a button and the chip could kill you just like that. So you brothers stay tuned for the next episode. Well actually the part two of this show and the subsequent parts of the show. And it's we're gonna go get into a lot more detail. So I hope you brothers are enjoying this so far. And uh hey all the GMS videos you brothers should you know comment on them, favorite them because that pushes our videos up to the top and that gets up out there more. So any GMS videos you brothers see out there, you know, uh, rate it, you know, li I like this video, comment on it, subscribe to the channel, and then just, that's another way of helping to push this word. All right, and uh, see you next part. Shalom.